In my second video on the topic of making plastic powder, I want to give you a little more insight into the physics behind the processes involved, to stop you from hunting pink unicorns. Comments on the previous video suggested to use various types of existing grinders for turning PLA pellets into plastic powder. Coffee or flour mills and ball or hammer mills were frequently mentioned. So in a first experiment, let's take a look at the very different properties of these materials. Energy is required to shred materials, the smaller the grain size of the end product should become, the more energy must be used. There are only a few numerical values on the internet about how much specific energy is required to grind plastics. Anyone who can deliver reliable values is welcome to share them, preferably with a reference to the source. With simple experiments, I will give you at least an idea of how much energy is needed. Experimental setup number 1 converts potential energy into kinetic energy, which is then used to shatter the materials. A hammer with a hinge attached to the handle falls from a predetermined height onto the material sample. Material sample number 1 is a grain of wheat with the dimensions of approximately 6 x 4 x 3 mm. A drop height of just 2 cm is enough to shatter the grain. Object number 2 is a coffee bean with the dimensions 10 x 7 x 5 mm. Here too, a fall height of less than 2 cm is sufficient to smash the bean. Even dropping the hammer several times from a height of just 1 cm smashes the coffee bean effortlessly. The following is a PLA pellet with a diameter of around 4 to 5 mm. A drop of 2 cm leaves no visible marks on the pellet. Even dropping the hammer several times from a height of 3 cm does not cause the material to splinter. The last material is a piece of glass with dimensions of around 10 x 10 x 2 mm. Less than 2 cm is enough to shatter the material. If the hammer is dropped several times from this height, smaller and smaller splinters are formed. I worked with glass powder a few years ago and the hammer of all mills mentioned before work very well with this material. The toughest nut in the test series is obviously the plastic pellet at room temperature. PLA only becomes brittle at very low temperatures. So much more energy has to be put into the grinding process at room temperature than it is the case with the other materials shown here. Coffee grinders are for coffee and flour mills are for flour and if you still believe that you can effectively grind PLA pellets with those types of mills, try it out and report your results. The hammer has to be dropped from a height of around 10 cm to smash a PLA pellet. 5 to 10 times the amount of energy is required to shred PLA. Different processes occur when grinding than when hammering, which means crushing the plastic with high pressure or shear forces. The next experiments are meant to estimate the energy required for grinding. Instead of a grinder, electric cutting tools are used. Version number 1 is a circular saw. This is used to cut 6mm thick polymethyl methacrylate, PMMA for short, or acrylic glass, but two panels at once which results in a material thickness of 12mm and is done in just 3-4 to four seconds. Unfortunately, I don't have any PLA sheets in my basement. The cutting length is 80mm and the cutting width is about 2mm. The electrical power consumed during cutting is between 1000 and 1300 watts. 
The calculations result in a volume of 1920 cubic millimeters and an energy requirement between 0.8 and 1.4 watt hours for the cut. With a density of 1.18 grams per cubic centimeter for acrylic glass, around 2.3 grams of plastic powder have been created. The energy consumption per kilogram is between 347 and around 608 watt hours, and it would take around half an hour for one kilogram of plastic to be machined. The end product we get is quite coarse chips that seem unsuitable for the extruder. The next tool is an electric tile cutter with a diamond coated cutting disc. This is used to cut a single sheet of 6mm acrylic glass. The cut is made over a length of 500mm. Water cooling prevents the plastic from melting. The cut takes 85 seconds. An electrical input power of around 270 watts is drawn. The cutting width is approximately 2.5mm. The calculations give a volume of 7500 cubic millimeters, which corresponds to not quite 9 grams of plastic powder and an energy requirement of 6.4 watt hours for the cut. Using the rule of 3 we get an energy consumption of 711 watt hours per kilogram and with the tile cutter it would take more than 2 and a half hours to grind 1 kilogram of plastic powder. The end product is at least a very fine powder. Even if the experiments are quite simple in nature, they show two basic problems that need to be taken into account when grinding PLA pellets. A lot of energy is required to machine the plastic and this energy is higher, the smaller the grain size of the end product has to be. This energy input is significantly smaller when cutting than when grinding. When cutting, the tool moves along a line through the workpiece, which cannot move around. Grinding, on the other hand, is a statistical process in which the material to be ground flies around and is processed several times by the grinding tool until the desired size is finally reached. During each of these processes, the particle is initially elastically deformed before the desired material removal finally occurs. When cutting, the elastic deformation ideally only occurs once, but in any case, less often. Furthermore, energy is also required for stirring the pellets. With an energy input of around 300 watts, you can get at best 400 grams of very fine plastic powder per hour, like when cutting with a diamond coated disc. If larger grain size meets your requirements, you can achieve a correspondingly higher material throughput. I've built and tested various grinders to optimize the efficiency of the process. In the first video I processed the pellets with a sharp edged cutter and at the end I suggested changing the dimensions towards a wider cutting edge. In practice, however, this only leads to a small increase in material throughput, since ultimately only the largest particle between the stator and the blade is processed, so making it very wide makes little sense. Since I'd like to keep things simple, I experimented with rotors made of flat steel. This works, but no miracles are achieved. It can be seen that the screws used as the stator nor the rotor shaft are ideally hard, which causes them to bend when the granules are hammered. So a more sturdy version followed with tighter tolerances between rotor and stator. 
However, this means that the rotor gets stuck as soon as there are too many pellets in the container. The hammer experiment showed how much energy is needed to break pellets with blunt tools. If the ground material is added slowly, the shredding is successful, but the end product was a bit too magnetic. Did I mention that PLA can be really hard? The stator screws were able to deflect in the tin can, but in the long run, a few of those teeth were lost. The fact that the rotor or stator can bend slightly is obviously not a disadvantage, so let's do that on purpose. Hammer mills have a rotor with tools being free to swing on the fastening end. If such a hammer hits a particle that is trapped on the stator, the kinetic energy of the steel blade is used to shred the material. My implementation with hammers made of flat iron works in continuous operation, but more as a grinder than as a hammer, as the energy of the pieces of an iron bar is too small to hammer pellets. The next test uses a horizontally arranged flat iron with beveled and teeth ends. The stator screws are not arranged as a spiral like in the first video and the gap between the blade and the stator is large enough for a pellet to fit easily between them. This means that the rotor does not jam, but material is still removed, not only between the blade and the particle, but also between two or more particles under high shear forces. With more than just one flat iron, the material throughput increases. The power consumed by the router is not quite 200 watts at the lowest level. By now it should have become clear to all people who do not spend their lives hunting for pink unicorns that this power is not high enough to get several kilograms of plastic powder per hour. At least enough very fine plastic powder trickles into the back, so that I will be able to continue my experiments with my direct granules extruder. There are still many things untold about grinders and mills. As soon as it is clear how fine the powder must be or how coarse it can be in order to be able to produce good prints. I will continue working on the grinder and modify it for continuous powder production as well as test other rotors data combinations. Did I mention that heat generation is a big problem? The grinder is in principle also a radial fan with the inlet near the axis of rotation and the outlet on the sieve. With a fine filter the heat can be easily removed from the inside, or you can shortcut the air circuit and install an intercooler. This video was also made possible by a generous anonymous donation. Thank you very much for that. If you would also like to support my projects with an Opel, you are welcome to click the donate button on my pages to send me an equivalent value for one or more cans of peanuts. On my website you can also find further information about the grinder including calculation examples for the energy required. Have a click. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.